YouTube, Brian Phillips here, on special right now. We're gonna open it up. This is a mini convergence. Yeah, baby. Oh yeah, look at that thing. I've already had uh, some other brands of VTOLs, and so I said, that was pretty awesome, and so I'm gonna try something a little better. And they're hoping this is it. Looks pretty good. This is the Mini Convergence VTOL, which stands for vertical takeoff or landing. That's what VTOL is. As you can see in this image, it's flying like an airplane, but then in this image, it's flying like a vertical takeoff, like a quad, or well, in this case, it's only got three motors. So this is a bind and fly. It's made by Horizon Hobby. Um, we're gonna open it up right now. These little planes from Horizon are awesome because you just open them and they're super easy to set up. It looks like FPV ready. Okay, so it comes with some sticker kits. Looks like you get to pick. There's a bunch of these in here. Okay, here's the goods. Super nice packaging as always. Man, it looks naked. It does. As you can see, we've got decent servos in here too, which is really nice. Got brushless motors. What are these things? These are 1404, 2500 KV E-flight motors. Looks like they're all the same. And obviously they're gonna have counter rotating here. And then in the back, this one is gonna be going like that for lift. And then these things will actuate forward. Okay, so we're gonna pop up the battery hatch. Okay, it looks like it takes a GST end battery. It's got an FPV, I think that's a JST Micro PH 1S connector. I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't hold me to it, guys. Um, so basically, if you do FPV with this, I believe there's just a little bit of overhaul that has to be done. Possibly this thing would come off, or you would just put it in here, just put your gear in here. It's got a nice magnetic hatch on it. It's very simple. Um, good spectrum servos down here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this thing out of the box. They always like to hide the manuals on the bottom for some reason. This should be in actually English, which is super nice. That's one of the things you don't necessarily get with some of the other competitors, is you get an English written manual, which is really handy if you speak English. Uh, if you don't speak English, I don't know if it's very helpful to you, but they do have a bunch of other languages. I just don't know if they're any good. Oh, look. Oh, it comes with spare props. Comes with two spare props. Uh, this one does not come with a battery, it doesn't look like. So this is a bind and fly basic, I believe is what they call that. And what's included? See the panel for details here. Okay, so it looks like we got the bind and fly. So it comes with the receiver, the servos, the ESC, and the motor. But it doesn't come with any of the rest of the goodies. Oh, cool, look at that sticker set. I like that. That's Ooh, neat. Hold on. Oh, yep. All right, cool. So let's see what we got to do. Let's see what we got to do to set this thing up. I'm sort of torn on spending a lot of time on the decals right now just because it doesn't really make a difference in terms of the performance. Let's uh, look at this. Okay, so they got the computerized transmitter set up. So it goes DX, DX6 through 20. Oh, we're flying it like an airplane. That's pretty cool. Wow. So you fly it with a regular normal setup? That's really weird. That's pretty sweet. So it looks like we're going to have some different settings in here that I'm not used to. I'm assuming that this has to do with the switch in modes. Okay. So the flight conditions, acro and stability. Stability mode limits the bank and pitch angles of the aircraft. The aircraft will self-level if you release the transmitter sticks. Acro mode removes the bank angle limits and will not self-level the aircraft if you release the transmitter sticks. 
Acro mode is intended for experienced pilots who are comfortable flying the aircraft in any orientation. Okay. Oh, okay, so here we go. Hover mode with stability, airplane mode with stability, and then airplane mode with, with acro. And remember, acro mode is the one where you're like crazy full control. And then the throttle cut is switch H, which is good because that's usually what I use for, for that. Okay, so the trim. So there's just a little bit more setup on there. Okay, so these are the different languages too, like I was talking about. Looks like this is an insert that goes with the manual. Not really sure why that is. I wonder if maybe at one point they were gonna release this as a ready to fly. But it looks like this is the instruction manual. I just wanna see if it says all the same stuff. Looks like you need six channels or it has a six channel receiver. Five minute flight time. Looks like they're recommending a, a 3S 800 milliamp 30C pack. Let me uh, jump over there. Let's show them this page real quick while we check the batteries. I think we'll probably use, we'll probably use the Onyx or we'll use the E-Flight packs. Because we've got these two different variety of packs here, guys. We've got the E-Flight 800 milliamp 3S. This one's a 30C pack. I've not had as good luck with this because it was cold when we first tested it. These things perform better in the warm, I believe. These Onyx are solid and they're a better value if you ask me. So I would just buy this if I was buying them. Uh, you can get that with your order too, which is kind of nice. So you order the plane, you don't have to order these from a different site. You can get this from Verizon as well. So when you buy this thing, you can buy that. This thing's on sale. I think it's around hundred bucks right now. So of course, you know, you might be watching this video in like two years, it might not be on sale. So looks like the CG is, is listed here, 200 to 210 millimeters from the leading edge. Now let's see if they marked it. Uh, they did not mark it. Okay, so we're gonna have to mark that. Let's mark that now, actually. I'm just gonna get a ruler. And marking the center of gravity is not Essentially, you don't have to do it, but it is kind of nice to have the center of gravity. Now, the center of gravity is going to be more, it's going to be more critical in the forward flight mode uh, than it is in the quad style flying mode. So, 210 centimeters. It's kind of a millimeters. long ways back. Oh, millimeters. Sorry, I was going to say centimeters. That's a long ways. So, 210. So, that'd be, there's 100. There's 200, so it's somewhere between, oh, I'm just lining up the beginning of the ruler. There's 200 and there's 210, okay? So you can kind of see it. It's basically right there, guys. So it's like at the seam is the back side of it and then just in front of it, about a, a quarter inch in front is gonna be your, your front mark. And then I usually just kind of eyeball the other side, especially since this thing's gonna have such a wide range. My guess is this thing's not gonna be super CG dependent. Just my experience on this type of aircraft's not a big deal. Okay, so uh, it looks like computerized, uh, computerized transmitter setup is also listed here. If they ever send you an addendum, go with what the addendum says because they've likely made a correction, okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that here in a minute. Airplane flight mode during transition and then multi-rotor flight mode. Okay, it looks pretty straightforward stuff. We'll figure it out in a minute. Looks like they give you some instructions for FPV right here, guys. If you're doing FPV, the FPV camera just goes right up on top of the canopy, which is all right. But it's cool that they've got the built-in cable for it, so it's really simple to set that up. And then if you ever have a blade that you need to replace, they're listed right here. It shows an R. It's not gonna show up on camera, I bet, camera crew. And then this one says L. Okay, so right meaning um, that it goes, I guess, that way. <laughs> I don't exactly know the, the logic behind that, but um, maybe they mean the right propeller. But see, the thing is this one is a left, so 
I don't know. I've run into that <laughs> problem before on these things, but it is listed in the manual. So if you run into a situation, I know when you're flying these things, you gotta be a little bit careful. You don't crash just like with any other airplane because these things are a point of vulnerability. So just be real gentle. And we'll go over that when we fly it here in a few minutes. And then here's all the, the other crap. Okay, good. So it looks like basically the gist of it is gonna be right here. Mm -hmm. So this, this plane doesn't outright say safe, okay? Uh, Sensorated flight envelope, which is the auto leveling for airplanes. But I don't think that's really necessary here because this thing is already gonna have that quad mode in it, which is basically gonna be safe for us. So without further ado, we gotta look at decals real quick. We obviously know what everything comes with. And it looks like there's several sets here. So I'm kind of curious what the sets are. We'll just kind of blast through those quick. I mostly want to fly this thing now because it's really nice out and it's a beautiful mm -hmm. sunset coming. Okay, so we got the United States Air Force. Oh yeah, buddy. That's the one I like. That's cool. And then you got the horizon. Oh, there's missiles. Okay, so I'm not sure if they laid out exactly where to put all this stuff. So I think I might just look at the pictures here. Did you see them in there? In the no, I don't think so. I can... I didn't see them either. But I think basically what you do is, is you, you can tell that obviously like this is the wings and then this is the vertical stabilizers. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna slap them on there real quick because I like this setup the best. But it's cool because if you and your buddy get one of these, you can have battles. And uh, I mean, I probably wouldn't crash into each other because you're gonna ruin these things. But uh, what I wanna do is my buddy Esteban, who's cameoed in my videos a few times, he's got one of these and we're gonna fly together, I'm sure. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and stick these decals on. We'll just show you what it looks like in a minute. You don't need to watch me do this. All right, guys, so we got stickers on. Uh, that was quite the undertaking. There's a lot of stickers, oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, you don't think it's too many until you get started and then you're like, wow, that's going to take a while because there's stickers on top of other stickers, literally, but it looks, it looks cool. Of course I had to add some extra ones just for extra obnoxiousness, but I really kind of like this. This one is the one we looked at and we had to go to a spectrum, mm -hmm. spectrum, spectrum RC, RC's website. Mm -hmm. So I think you might be able to link there through horizon. We'll, we'll try to put up a link if I can remember. But either way, you can find these schemes. I added a couple of, uh, I think I added this and this, and then I added these on the bottom. But other than that, it's pretty much stock. And then I added this and this, because I wanted to be able to see something, because the white up against the white sky, if it's cloudy or whatever, might be kind of tough to see. And I don't see any LEDs on it. So this is kind of what I ended up with. I ended up with, uh, looks like the Japanese scheme, and then the Marines, and the US Air Force, and the Army. And then they got the Stars and Stripes with color instead of black or uh, gray and white. And then, of course, they've got the U.S. Air Force here and some different stickers. So there's, there's three full pages. These are nice decals. They're not crappy ones. So when you pull, sometimes the paper backing was coming off on mine, but I was able to release the stickers on every single one of them. I had one that kind of lifted. The, the ones that go on this are really difficult to get off in one piece. So, but that's just the nature of the beast. I mean, it's just kind of the shape of the, the plane. So without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get the radio set up done. And uh, this thing's gonna be cool. I wanna see it fly really bad. And I don't know if we're gonna get the light for it. So we will pause it and come right back when we get the radio. All right, so we're not gonna use this manual for the setup. We're just gonna use the, the addendum that came in here. Uh, I'm gonna use the E-Flight Pack to set things up. And then I'm gonna fly on the Onyx. They're both the same ratings but the Onyx has just treated me better. It's also, I think it's a little cheaper. So, um, got the DX18 here. Uh, obviously that's a computerized transmitter. So we're looking at all these different, basically all of them are the same setup, okay? So it's gonna give you step-by-step -step instructions, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scroll down uh, to system setup, start all transmitter programming with a blank acro. Okay, so I'm gonna go to system setup. Yes, and then this shuts off the radio. Uh, radio frequency output there and we're gonna go to system setup we're gonna go to I have to go to model select and make a new model so add new model and we're gonna create take a second model type and make sure it's set up to an airplane the data is gonna be reset doesn't matter model name 
Okay, so it says Acro, so obviously I'm gonna put in the uh, Mini Convergis uh, VTOL, so we'll go ahead and do that while we pause. Okay, so I've got Mini Convergence, and then one, two, three, four. And so it's ironically, if you ever buy a model from Horizon, it's interesting because you can pretty much always fit the full name into the blank, at least on the higher level instrument, or on the DX18. On my DX8, I could only fit part of them. So I'm not sure if there's anything to that, but I just noticed it. It's kind of an ironic thing. Uh, the one thing I always have loathed about this entry method is that everything runs backward. You forgot your T because you're talking. Oh, dang it. I put it totally out of order. See how it runs the letters backward? That's so weird. It's, I guess it's only backward from one point of view. V toll. And so you always have to like think about where the letter is relative to where you are. Obviously it works pretty good because you've only got one input device here. But as you can see, it's in there, which is pretty sweet. So aircraft type we already did. Um, wing type is normal, okay. So I'm gonna change my icon by scrolling through. I'm not sure what I'm gonna show for an icon on this. I think they have one that's kind of a like a quad sort of looking thing. I don't know if they have one. Well, I guess that'd be pretty close. Okay, then I'm gonna go into channel assign. Okay, so channel assign. I'm gonna scroll all the way to next. And then I'm gonna go here, channel input config gear inhibit. Okay, so you click on it and then you go to inhibit. Okay, like that, and then you click. I clicked clear on accident, but I didn't need to. And then auxiliary one, we're going to inhibit. My guess is those are two um, items that are embedded into the system. And so if you inhibit them, then that prevents you from accidentally changing the flight mode with a switch that isn't designated. And that would be important. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, I would definitely do it exactly as set up in this manual. Okay, so trim setup, throttle, three position digital. Okay. Trim setup. I've never done trim setup, I guess. Throttle it says five. We want three position digital, two position digital, three position digital. Hmm. I didn't even know such a thing existed, guys. It's the first time I've ever done it. Okay, go to function list. Okay, so function list. I think function list, they said that before. I think this is the function list when you just reboot to the regular function list. So you click and that's your function list, okay? Mm -hmm. I've never actually paid attention enough to what notice that. And I'm, I'm only <laughs> six years in, just figured it out. That's the thing about this hobby, guys. You're always learning something new. And like I said, this is probably like, what, my 120th model so far? Probably. Um, okay, so function list, set expo values. Okay, so this time I'm gonna go to dual rates and expo. Elevator, aileron, rudder. Okay, so they just want us to set it to whatever. So in my case, I'm just gonna go in to dual rates and expo. So they have a high rate and a low rate. Hmm. I think I'm just gonna set this to my normal setup, this will be the high rate. Um, so the, the, like the most responsive controls and then this will be the low rate, the lowest. So on the lowest rate, I am going to follow their instructions with rates and drop them down to 70 for all three. Oh crap, I gotta set this to switch F. And then ailerons, I wanna switch that to switch F. And then rudder, I'm gonna switch that to switch F. Okay, so now, in the lowest setting, I am going to run Expo, excuse me, I'm gonna run the rates to 70. Okay, on elevator. Now, this is probably a best backwards way to do this, but I am going to still do it this way because it's a little bit different setup for me. So I'm just trying to be careful the way I do it. And then the high rate's gonna be 100, so obviously that should drop me back to 100, whoops, 100. And then on this rate, it's gonna be 100, 100, and then 70. Okay, see how that works? 100, 100, and then 70. So in zero, it's 100, okay. So then on elevator, same thing, zero is 100. Oh, look, it already scaled it for me. That's kind of interesting. I didn't really want you to scale it for me, but that's okay, we'll just change it. Okay, so we've got, see how it's, 
Okay. And then the third setting, 100, 100, then 70. Okay, so that's gonna take care of our dual rates part. Then we're gonna set up the expo. So they want 10% on elevator, 10% uh, on ailerons and zero on runner. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Okay, so we'll go to ailerons. We'll set that by default to at least 10, okay? Then in the second setting, we're gonna set it to 20. So we have a little bit more if we want it. Then I'm gonna, whoops, I don't want a curve. I don't want multiple curves, that gets so complicated. Okay, so I'm gonna set elevator to 10, and then I'm gonna set elevator to 20. So basically I'm gonna have a deviation from um, expo only in the middle. So I usually run the middle setting, so I'm gonna have a little bit more bed and sticks in the middle. Okay, so then we wanna set travel to 100% for all controls. So by default, so if you didn't catch this guys, I'm just gonna scroll through all the way from the beginning. So ailerons are 110, uh, 120, and then 70, and I'm gonna set the expo for all of these to, um, let's go ahead and set the expo to 30 for ailerons and elevator in the top setting. And then rudder, I'm gonna go to 15. So we're gonna have a little bit more rudder uh, expo in the top setting, because they didn't, they didn't recommend any. Okay, so that's just my spin on it. Servo travel to 100 is done. Set throttle cut to minus 130 and select switch H. Okay, so throttle cut. I always do throttle cut. It's inhibited. Switch H is up here in case you're wondering. Make sure it's in the condition that you want it to be because it doesn't make that obvious. It just says set it to switch H. So which way's on? You can tell by moving your throttle stick and you can tell if it moves up or down. When it's on, it should be at minus 130. Now, normally I would change that to 100, but because of the nature of this flight controller and everything in here, I'm gonna set it to 130, just like the manual says, okay? All right, so back from that, we're gonna set P mix in the mixing menu. So we're gonna go to mixing, P mix one in the mixing menu. Oh, P mix, okay, so, so there's a programmable mix one. So we're gonna set that to curve. Okay, so we're gonna curve. Select inhibit for the input. Okay, so the input, do you see the input? Oh, switch inhibit, okay. So that's inhibited for the input. Select switch D. Um, oh, we just have to select this. Then we have to select switch D. Gosh, I don't like having this switch. It's hard to get to. I'm mm -hmm. gonna I'm gonna set mine to this switch, guys. Don't hate me. No, I'm gonna set it to D for now. We'll just set it to D. Oh, you have to scroll it in. You see what I'm doing, guys? I thought I could just move it and it would do it. Hmm. See, now it's moving the different positions, okay? Then inhibit for the output. So that's the input, that's the output. Okay, so the output is gonna be auxiliary one. So you have to scroll that in. There's aux one. Remember we disabled that earlier, guys. Okay, set the three points on the curve to. Okay, so you have to scroll through. Then the first is gonna be 100. See how the curve is changing on the chart? It takes a second to update on some of these radios. I've only had one time I've ever crashed my DX18. It was when I was doing a crazy complex mix. And uh, it was actually in the sequencing menu and I crashed it and I had to reboot it. It's the first and only time I've ever crashed it. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna change the direction of the throttle response given the condition of the switch. So that when you move it, your th throttle is going to be controlled differently. It's, it's all right. It'll make sense later if you think about it a lot. Okay, set switch on. So that means it's just on all the time. Okay, you can't override that. You don't want that to be off or controlled with another switch because then you're going to have this thing sitting here. It's going to try to like run on your counter, okay? Okay, so we're going to walk out of that. Then we're going to do P mix 2. We're going to set it to curve. And then we're going to go to... Inhibit for the input. Okay, so inhibit, we're gonna highlight it and we're gonna switch it to D as in dog. So it looks like we're tying them both to D, okay? 
then the output is going to be gear. Remember, we inhibited that earlier. Do you remember that, camera mm -hmm. crew? Okay, so then we're going to set the three points on the curve to minus 100. 100, okay. Then we're going to set to plus 100, plus 100. If you get annoyed and you, you go the wrong way, just press clear. Sorry, I took one for the team, folks. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. My camera crew always has to watch this first so she can set hers up later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. It's funny how things like that don't work <laughs> out. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so it's set to on, so it's basically always on. Okay, so we'll walk back. Oh, you hear that beep? That's exciting. That's the crashy crash behavior. I've only seen that a couple of times. Ugh. I'm not really worried about it because I've seen it before. So now watch this. I'm going to go back in and look. Okay. Everything is set. If your radio beeps at you like that, check it. Make sure everything is intact and don't freak out. It's all part of the show. <laughs> okay. Great. So when that's done beeping and throwing a fit, what I'm going <laughs> to do is just to be safe, I'm going to go out. I'm going to set my one out timer. Uh, my timer, how long did they say the timer was? I think you said five minutes earlier. Uh, I think it was in the other manual. Oh, you're right, it was. Okay, so I think they said five minutes. I think that's what you said. Five minutes. Yep. Okay. All right, so five minutes. Now, normally I do a one out. Uh, one out. I'll probably still do a, I could just do a throttle. I'm gonna change it from tone to tone and vibrate. Um, the difference between one out and you just activate it is that when your stick is over 25%, it starts counting down, okay? If you press clear, it resets it, and that's the default. You can change those things. But you see over here, it shows you your, your count. So now it's running, obviously. So I can clear that at any time, but if you turn off one out, What's gonna happen is it's basically going to only operate the timer when your stick is above 25. One, two, three, and below 25 and it stops. So maybe in this application, a one out timer is not appropriate just because if you're not giving it throttle, you're not flying, you're legitimately down. Okay, so I'll go ahead and not use the one out timer. I'm clear to this mm -hmm. five minute timer, okay? All right, so now flight mode, uh, position, Zero is where you want this by default, okay? Throttle cut is on, which means the motors are off. I'm gonna scroll to my monitor and verify. See how it's not moving? See how it is moving? That means we're safe-ish. <laughs> okay? Safer. S safe, safer. So, now we have to bind this thing, which I don't even remember seeing binding instructions. It's in the regular manual, again. Okay, let's look at the binding instructions. Ooh. Check if you have to register with the FAA. Transmitter and receiver binding. Confirm the transmitter is off, center all trims. Make sure your sticks and sticks, including your throttle cut and your position for your mode is in the correct position. Because your fail safes get set when you bind to a, a Horizon Hobby product that has fail safe, okay? So you need to make sure you do that. Always bind. If you need to rebind with your safe select all figured out, do that too. Because I typically recommend putting safe on in your fail safe. So like if your plane is going into crash and you lose radio signal because your battery dies or something like that, the, at least the plane's gonna level off and crash into your neighbor's window. <laughs> All right, so place the aircraft on a level surface. Connect the flight battery. Take three steps away from the aircraft and cover yourself. <laughs> okay, so the receiver is bound on the uh, to the transmitter when the LED on the receiver uh, glows solid orange. So obviously you're gonna have to step back three feet and then look for it. I, that's pretty straightforward stuff. So the same binding procedure as every other plane, with the exception of safe select, kind of complicates those matters sometimes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just, you know what we're going to do? We're what? just going to put this pack in for now. Get the binding. Okay. Transmitter's off. 
We're just gonna ram this in here. Now, I'm not gonna use the FPV thing, so I'm just gonna ram that up in there. Ooh, I like the way that fits. That's a mm. nice fit. So much easier than other planes I've been playing with lately. <laughs> okay, so Slightly. this, hypothetically, it's not gonna chop my hands up. Okay, you'll notice there's some lights on. All right, I'm gonna check the CG. I know it didn't say that in the manual, but I'm just gonna do it. Oh yeah, we're good. I knew it wouldn't be a big issue. Okay, so the transmitter is off. Sticks are in the correct positions. I'm gonna read it to you. Binding, VSMX, 22 milliseconds. Okay, this is where I do a little thing called CYA. Oh yeah, they got it up. Okay, so here's the next step, guys. I really wanna see this thing work, but I don't wanna crash it. So I'm gonna be careful the way I do this. I'm gonna err on the safe side. Oh yes, that's so cool before it starts the finger chopping mode. Woo! Can't wait to see this. I normally don't start from the middle of the room uh, with my airplanes, but with this thing, I'm gonna. Okay, so throttle cuts off. Cover yourself. Are you safe? Sure. Okay. Oh yeah, buddy. Dude, it's wanting to tip funny. Mm-hmm. You see how it's tipping? Yeah. I'm just kind of riding the controls to get it to go level. Okay, so if it does that to you, the first thing I can recommend is change the mode to the middle. Change it to the top. Okay, so everything is moving free. And the reason you change it is just to make sure that it's actually moving mm. free. Okay, throttle cut is off. Oh, there we go. It just, you just gotta fly it, that's what it is. Okay, so. It's pretty easy to control, but it's uh, definitely not like, I'm pulling the stick to keep it flying level. It's got slow yaw response, which surprised me a lot. I figured it'd be super yaw response -y. Trying to, trying to kind of figure out where the uh, props are pointing right now, actually. Looks like my right one's pointing backward a little bit. Okay. So the other thing I'm noticing is, I'm just trying to make sure I heard what almost felt like there was something maybe binding but I don't know that for a fact. It's just hard to tell because there's a lot of moving parts. I want to go outside and see it fly forward, but I don't know if we can do that right now. I think it's too dark. All right, might as well give it a little bit of room this time. Do you have your safety glasses and hard hat on? Mm-hmm. which I'm not crazy about that, but I did, I did turn on some extra expo. So maybe I'm gonna, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put my throttle cut on. I'm gonna test it. Okay, it's tested. Let's look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into my system setup. I'm gonna go to, or excuse me, my function list. So function list, click, do rates and expo. Okay, so I'm in the middle setting. That's the top setting. I'm actually gonna change my expo to uh, like, I, I want to be pretty aggressive with it. On the ailerons, the elevator, they'll do 15. Mm -hmm. And then rudder, uh, negative 10, okay? Then I'm gonna put in the middle switch. I'm gonna actually set the rudder to minus 10 because I want it to be more responsive, not less. I'm gonna set that to zero. And then I'm gonna go to ailerons and I'm gonna set that to zero. Okay, so let's see how this does, guys. So basically what I just did there was I, I took the expo and I said, get out of here. I'm in the middle setting, so I got zero expo and 100% dual rates. So 
Sorry. Let's just move that stuff out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh yeah, there we go. A lot, a lot better, a lot better y'all. Y'all control. But it still does like to kind of tip a lot. So I'm going to try that again. I don't want to trim it because I'm concerned the trim is going to screw with me on the flight controls. The backward, the backward is like, I feel like maybe it's just a little bit, a little bit less responsive on the backward and more responsive on the forward. I wonder if I can adjust the CG for that. Throw mm -hmm. cuts on and tested. I'm just gonna pop this open here. And I'm just gonna try to scooch the battery back a little bit, which means I'm probably gonna have to get a little bit creative because there's just not that much room to move the battery to be perfectly honest. So I'm just gonna try to stuff it back like that. See if we can get a little bit further back. All right, you wanna go ahead and uh, scooch back there, camera crew. It sure looks cool. See how it's sticking forward? Yep. See what's not in my head? Nope. Alright. I don't know why it's sticking forward like that. Because basically I've got the stick. Why don't we show the people at home? And what we'll do is we'll just fly it here and then you can see both controls at the same time. Okay. Okay, so you wanna maybe just go right over my shoulder here. Okay. So we've got the flight mode in the uppermost, which of course throttle cut is on and tested. Okay, so if I switch that, it's gonna tip forward and then it's gonna go into the forward flight configuration. And there's that, okay? So I'm in my middle setting on my Expo and dual rates. Okay, so throttle cut's off, taking off. Now you see I'm having to ride that, that stick. You see, you gotta remember, you do have to give it some throttle to get it to respond. But I'm having to ride my stick, so that, that appears to be a trim issue. Okay, you see how much I'm riding that stick there, camera crew? Mm -hmm. I don't want to ride my stick like that. Okay, out of the throttle altogether. Throttle cut is on and tested. So I'm just going to try trim first. Now keep in mind, the way that the the way that the differential thrust works, that's how, that's how you control this axis, okay? So it's not like you're losing uh, throw on the servo, but the pulse width modulation plus and minus is still consumed by trim. So that means if you trim 20% of your throw, you still lose part of your range, even though you're technically just controlling electronically controlled axis. So now that being said, you could potentially increase it, but this flight controller might not like it. So we're gonna go ahead and try this again. I'm still having to ride the stick a little bit, so. Once I get up, it's no big deal. But it's definitely not like hands off or anything. It's not hard to fly. But it's certainly not, oh gross, look at this, look at this. There's a camera <laughs> on there. Where'd that come from? There are girls that live here. That's right, gross. I didn't, Sorry. Maybe that was my problem. Maybe it's that giant streamer on there. <laughs> it's definitely got some power. I yeah. want to see it fly forward, but it's dark now. I screwed around too long putting the decals on. Let's do a couple of different angles here, camera crew. You want to go over by the A10 and then they can see it. The thing I'm most impressed with is the looks of it. And when I chop the throttle, it stops, mm -hmm. which is really nice. The thing I'm not impressed with right now is uh, when I 
fly, I have to really ride the sticks, especially at the bottom of the throttle range. And I don't know if I've maybe done something wrong. I don't think I have. I checked over everything, but it's almost like, it's almost like something just isn't quite right yet. And I don't know what it is. I'll have to do a little investigation. And um, I really want to fly for you outside, but I can't do that yet. So we're gonna have to wait until we have daylight. We have some lights and things, but. Probably not enough. Probably not enough, right. So without further ado, we will stop the video and come right back. All right guys, so we're gonna go outside and fly this. Um, uncharacteristically of our channel, we have practiced a little bit with this plane, airplane thing, VTOL, quad, whatever you wanna call it, <laughs> um, for a variety of reasons. One, I felt like it was kinda hard to fly and I didn't know if it was me or if it was the, the airplane. I mean, obviously you can tell from the video, we're gonna actually put this out in order. So um, as you can see, we're at 97% charge. This thing is awesome, by the way. Um, these, these Onyx packs are awesome, by the way. I'm gonna let you make up your own mind on this plane. Um, they're on sale right now. They're definitely not easy to fly. So, I don't want you guys to get the wrong idea. They have a lot of technology packed in here. Uh, it's definitely cool. You can do cool things with it. Um, obviously, it's got safe technology and all these things. But it's just one of those planes where it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. And you need to be careful. A couple things, too, to warn, warn you about. If you're flying this in close quarters, uh, don't. Because it takes a long time to transition from vertical flight or just stay in vertical flight. When you transition, it's going to take a while and it's going to pitch down. So just be prepared for it. Don't worry about it. Okay, throttle cuts off. And then don't be surprised if it goes to one side or the other. Okay. So as you can see, I'm having to hold that stick. I can't really get that to trim out. Okay. Camera crew, give me a shot of my fingers and the plane flying at the same time. Yes, I will try. There's plenty of power. You can do what you need to do. If it wants to not come towards you fast enough when you pull the stick back, then what you have to do is you have to basically adjust the mechanical linkages. Throttle cuts on and tested. That's the best thing about this plane right now is that the throttle cut works right now. That's something you don't get on some of the Chinese ones. Um, you have to physically detach this linkage here. You just pop this apart and then you lower it down and spin it one way or the other and when you when you have this neutral in advanced mode you want them to be straight up and down okay all right so as you can see it'll do some things that make you feel like you're maybe out of control but you're really not it it's very easy to fly and then i i read the reviews and i said that's weird i didn't have any problems with this landing it's very easy to land in my opinion uh that's if anything that's the one thing that's really good at because I haven't had a bit of problems. So I'm gonna just show you the transition. We're gonna go up to a healthy altitude. We're gonna run our throttle about halfway, and then I'm gonna flip the switch to horizontal flight mode. See how long it takes? And you have limited control, like I'm just getting control of it now, okay? You gotta have your throttle up to actually fly. I'm about, so oh, I would say 30% throttle here, okay? It's quiet when it runs forward. Mm -hmm because only the front two motors are running. And you'll notice it's running slightly pitch up, but we don't have that tendency to roll to the left. And then just so you guys can see, it's basically, this is, this is like running in safe mode, okay? So you do have some yaw authority, it's limited from differential thrust, but I'm hands off right now, guys, hands off, okay? But you're gonna have limited bank angles and everything. So what I'll try to do is I'll try to show you when you come in here and you put it to full acro mode, you can do everything you want to do, but you have to do it, guys. It's not like there's no, there's very limited help here, okay? So if you're a pretty decent pilot, then you can do what you want to do, that's fine. And then back to hover, just be prepared to cut your throttle up fairly high, okay? See, I'm in, what, 60% throttle here? The other thing to watch out for is when you fly this thing, 
when it goes to low voltage warning, there isn't a low voltage warning. It just changes to vertical flight mode, okay? So if you're going forward doing some crazy maneuver, it's gonna start doing this. So don't be surprised when that happens, okay? So I'm gonna just go ahead and fly this over. As you can see, I'm kind of keeping the, the tail toward us. That's just, that's just an inexperienced heli or quad pilot sort of behavior, okay? But it's really, it's not hard to fly. It's just not as easy as some, okay? So I'm gonna show you some more. See how it's kind of leaning forward? That's one of the other things I noticed. See how it's not so much leaning forward? And I'm having to kind of push it into the wind to get it to advance. It just kind of does these things. It's not hard to fly, but you do have to be prepared for it. So full throttle, switching modes, and you have to wait for the full transition before you regain control, and then that nose down tip is normal, okay? It is very, um, how do I put this? It's kind of scary as a pilot to lose that level of control. I'm about 60% throttle here, just kind of flying about halfway past those power lines from where we are. Okay, I'm gonna go into advanced mode here. As you can see, it gets around and it's definitely, you have to get on the throttle to do what you wanna do, but look how nice it flies. I don't wanna beat this plane up. Some people have beat it up really bad, but I think it's just because it's not easy to fly. But I'll tell you what, the one thing I like a lot about this plane that I don't like about the Chinese ones is that you can actually fly it as a plane, guys. Um, I'll be totally honest with you. If you buy this as a beginner, just don't, okay? You're gonna be disappointed. It's, it's, it's not super easy to fly. It's not super incredibly difficult to fly, but it's definitely not easy for a beginner, okay? So we're gonna switch to regular mode. Okay, there's regular. Now watch for the pitch moment. You see that, guys? That's where it kind of goes a little bit wacky. There's that transitional period. You gotta watch for it. You have to be prepared and you'll be fine. And then don't be afraid to, don't be afraid. Like, okay, it's, I'm pointing it toward me. Why is it coming? Give it some throttle. Tell it what you want to do and it'll do it. It's fine. You just have to, you have to tell it what to do, guys. Okay, so here's our five minute timer. I'm not gonna Enrique Iglesias this plane just because <laughs> I don't wanna end up like him. But this plane, it's really cool, it's fun. It's just, it's just maybe not the easiest plane to fly that you've ever seen. And it does look cool. It's definitely a little bit smaller than some of the others I've reviewed. <laughs> but it's also, you know, if you're looking for easy to fly, just maybe this isn't the one. But if you want to use your DX-18 or your, your DX-6 or your you know, DX-8 or DX-9 or whatever, your Spectrum technology, you're going to get this because it's what works. I mean, unless you want to fly Futaba and then you can fly the other stuff. And, you know, when you're flying a Futaba F8, FHSS, then you're married to that brand. You know, you can go into your jumper open source stuff. But I just, I don't know, guys. This thing is the type of, of aircraft that is a challenge for you as a pilot. And so it's entertaining, it's kind of fun. Like if it's too easy, then you're just like, okay, this is boring. If my kid can fly it, then I, you know, I just doesn't seem like what I want to fly, you know? And just so you guys know on the Onyx, we're about a minute nine past our five, okay? So we're at six minutes and nine seconds here, okay? And this is not hard right here. I'm just, you just kind of have to be on it. Now, if I were to flip this into advanced mode right now, I don't know if that just goes straight into forward flight mode. I haven't been crazy enough to try it. But I mean, that thing does look cool, doesn't it? Here, let's do this. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> it does look good against the blue on the house. Yeah. And when I say blue, I mean gray. Gray. I mean, what's the actual color? Cyberspace. I'm sorry, what is the color? Cyberspace. Cyberspace. So if you're flying in hover mode like this right now, is there a low voltage warning? Uh, I don't know. We haven't hit it probably in this mode. 
The one way I can usually tell on a quad or a, a heli is that, and you'll notice it's getting wonky. Yeah. When it lowers the altitude like that, it will get wonky. So just don't be surprised. And those downward tipped wings, uh, the opposite sharklets, I'm not sure exactly what you call them when they go down <laughs> like that. They definitely do not help the aerodynamic effect when you're going downward. I don't actually think they help the aerodynamic effect <laughs> anytime. Either way. But they look cool. And yes, this is one of the prettier quads, VTOLs, whatever you want to call it, because of all the decals that come with it. Is it the best thing since sliced bread? Probably not. Is it a swing and a miss? I don't know if I would go that far, guys. It's on sale right now, so if you got a hundred bucks you want to spend, then you can spend it on this and then. You know, or you could save a hundred bucks and you could put it toward an A10, which is awesome. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I still think it's fun. I still could think it's cool. I think the VTOLs are just one of those things that, you know, and that's the other thing I was reading a lot about is people that were doing grass landings and they were still having a bounce. Just, you know, if you bounce on landing with any plane, there's a good chance you're gonna beat stuff up. Oh, yeah. Oh, I picked up a leaf. I got a dangle. I got a dingleberry. What is it? Just like grass. grass Dead grass. Oh, gross. <laughs> we got a payload. Should I Enrique that off No. Oh, wow. Well, I don't know. From here? Yeah, let's not Enrique it. So let's do it in closing. Let's check the battery first. Got the throttle cut on. I'm three minutes, 33 past the timer. There it is. So I'm three minutes, 33 past the timer. Now I set this up as a, it's not a one out timer. So it's only going to run when the throttle stick is beyond 25%. And then be, beyond that, it's not going to run. Okay. Okay. So let's do this right now. We're going to go ahead and pull the balance charge lead and we're going to stick it in the hole. Woo -wee. Ready? Boom. Watch the exposure. Yeah. We got 12% life left. So I would say that on something like this, if we got 12% life, that was an eight minute flight time, maybe 10 minutes if it was a one out timer. That's a pretty decent flight time. It's not the easiest plane to fly, but it is cool. It's neat, it's fun to put the decals on. If you and your buddy are both good pilots, uh, so like me and Esteban probably can't do this. <laughs> I hope you're watching Esteban, uh, my favorite cameo. Um, then you could fly, you could have some fun with these things. Okay. Uh, do you want to be flying it around the living room? <laughs> I don't know. Probably not. It's, it's not that precise to be honest. Do you want to see what the low voltage looks like? Do we? I think let's, let's keep flying until we hit the low voltage so we can show the people what it looks like. Okay. I think another thing I could, I mean, if I got 12% life, I should be able to, okay. So you can still switch modes with throttle cut on. So let's just show them what it looks like. So it did switch modes. Okay, so watch how long this takes. This is going to the, this is how long it takes for the mode to switch. See that? That's a pretty That's long, a long time. time. So a one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So it takes over five seconds. And you're flying quick at five seconds, mm -hmm. okay? So you're gonna cover a lot of ground in that time. But I am really curious about the low voltage alarm, so I cannot actually believe that it's not already hit it. We'll just do some kind of figure eightage. Remember guys, if you have this thing and you want it to do something and it's not doing it, give it throttle, give it encouragement. I do like kind of the ride in the ground effect. It's fun, but that does not bode well for those wing tips. Yeah. And the other thing is guys, I've got this dream of having a plane that's like a VTOL and what it would consist of is a very small ultra micro, probably not EDFs just cause they're so power hungry, but it would be a small little commercial airliner and you could fly it in the house at zero miles an hour. And then you could come outside and transition into awesome near full speed performance. That would be cool. Guys, these are the types of things that Brian Phillips was thinking about as a kid. 
And now it's not a getting married or having kids. Had nothing. I had none of those thoughts in my mind. I mean, I knew that was going to happen, but this is this is these are the types of things. Oh, what was that? Is that you? Oh, I think we're out. Of power. Is that it? Okay, so throttle cuts on. Let's okay. check. Now I'm assuming at this point, since I can't keep it up, <laughs> that the power is gone. So we're gonna have to check. All right, throttle cut has been tested, by the way. Guys, throttle cut, best safety feature in the uh, industry. Okay, so obviously everything is, is working. It's just not giving me enough thrust to lift. So my guess is we're probably at like minus 5%. <laughs> okay. Good thing you don't over-exaggerate. No. Oh, minus 5%. We were at 12% we when we checked last time. So we'll just pull this out. One thing I really like about this thing too is the Velcro is actually nice. Funny, it's details like that that make the difference, right? Okay, so if you get this smart uh, tester, just do a better job of putting your little plastic mm -hmm. cover on because I nice. was just in a hurry and I didn't care. Uh, oh, it's at zero. Oh, yeah, oh boy, I really, I really ran her down that time. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay. Oh, jeez. Here, bring it closer, camera crew. Bring it right in. There you go. Okay, there. That'd yeah, be, I think it's your problem. She's dead. So basically, in this case, if you got a battery that's dead like that, don't waste your time on a balance. It's not going to matter. But I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, see, I don't even think it'll do it if you're mm -hmm. below. So that being said, guys, this this plane, this VTOL, it's kind of neat. It's kind of fun. But it's also not for everybody. And I'm just going to say that right now. I'm not giving this a negative review. Just because, honestly, I don't think it deserves it. I've had some stuff that's so bad that it doesn't even make the channel. This thing isn't even in that echelon, guys. It's just harder to fly. And, and don't get it expecting it to be easy because you'll be disappointed. And then you'll be like, how come you told me it was easy to fly? And I'll say, I told you it was hard to fly. Exactly the opposite of easy. Um, so I guess you're going to have to make of it what you wish. And if you fly it in the living room... Just make sure that you have an awesome wife that likes to film your radio control videos and takes care of uh, letting you fly in the living room without murdering you. So that's all I got for you today. Uh, this is the UMX by E-Flight. This is the UMX VTOL Mini Convergence, okay? And by the way, if you were wondering, there was a Convergence. This is not the Mini, the, the Mini is about half the size, okay? So if you weren't familiar with that, uh, you're probably not alone because it wasn't an ultra popular model. And I kind of gather that's why this thing's on sales because it wasn't extremely popular, but I still think it's pretty fun. So anyway, there you have it, guys. Leave your comments in the links below I, or, or actually follow the links below to buy one. You'll help support the channel. And then let me know all your complaints that you've ever had about this plane uh, or Horizon or E-Flight or anybody else. Just go ahead and put those complaints down below so we can read them and take them to heart. <laughs> Thanks for watching.